Welcome to the Jewish Awareness School of Biblical and Jewish Studies. Glad to have you with us in this class where we're going to look at Hebraisms and Jewish concepts within the New Testament. In this first lesson, I'd like to give you a kind of an explanation of what this is all about, kind of an introduction to it. There's a false thought out there, a false claim, that the Bible, specifically the New Testament, is a Gentile book, that it's not Jewish in any way, shape, or form. Nothing could be farther from the truth. The New Testament was written in Greek, and this leads some to say that, well, the New Testament must be a Gentile book because the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, the language of the Jewish people, but the New Testament was not. The New Testament was written in Greek. It was written in Greek, but there's a difference here. The Greek of the New Testament is a very different kind of Greek than from, say, classical Greek, like Plato and Socrates. The Greek of the New Testament is a Jewish Greek, and we'll explain that as we go through this class. What was the common spoken language in the land of Israel in the first century? Well, it was Greek. Much like today in America, although there are many different spoken languages, the main spoken language in America is English. So think about this for a second. Imagine an American Jew, okay, an American Jewish person, writing a book to other Americans. What language do you suppose he would write this in? Would he write it in Hebrew? Would that make sense today? An American Jew living in America writing a book to other American Jews. Well, he probably would not write it in Hebrew. Would his English, okay, he would probably write it in English. Would his English, this American Jewish person writing a book to other American Jews, would writing it in English then make it a Gentile book? No, not at all. And so this is kind of the false idea that we have, this false perspective regarding the New Testament, when in fact it is very Jewish. Yes, even though it was written in Greek. The New Testament Greek is not classical Greek. It's a Jewish Greek. There's three ways that we can see this. We can see it in words used, and each of these will have examples later in this class in various lessons. We'll see it in the words that are used, the specific words used within the New Testament. We'll also see it in the sentence structure used, how the words within the sentence, within the statement, within a paragraph, how they're organized, how they're used in their word order. And then also, we'll look at concepts that are taught that show us that this Greek, this New Testament, is a very Jewish book. Some of these quotes here that I'm about to share with you are from a Wikipedia article that I'll give the link to in a couple of slides here. But it talks about how the language progressed in the land of Israel, especially in the first century specifically. After the Babylonian captivity, Okay, so Daniel and those three Hebrew children and all of the other Jewish people that were taken captive from the land of Judah, taken to Babylon, 586 B.C. After the Babylonian captivity, when they returned to the land 70 years later, Aramaic replaced Biblical Hebrew as the everyday language in Judea. Okay, so Biblical Hebrew up until the Babylonian captivity was the main spoken language. There was a shift made, though, after the captivity, that Aramaic became the main spoken language. Now, Aramaic, like Hebrew, like Arabic, okay, is a Semitic language. They're kind of like sister languages, like you would think of today. We have the Romantic languages, uh, French, Latin, Italian, okay, languages like Spanish. They all have similarities. And they're very similar in their word order, their sentence structure, their grammar, and sometimes even the actual vocabulary itself is very similar. That's kind of what Aramaic is like with Hebrew. 
the two languages were as similar as two Romance languages or two Germanic languages today. Thus, Biblical Hebrew, which was still used for religious purposes, like it is today in America, Biblical Hebrew is still used in the synagogue, in the Jewish prayers, and things like that. It was not totally unfamiliar, but still a somewhat strange norm that demanded a certain degree of training to be understood properly. And so Biblical Hebrew kind of shifted to the back burner. After Alexander, Alexander the Great, conquered the known uh, world at the time, Judea was ruled by the Ptolemies and the Seleucids for almost 200 years. Jewish culture was heavily influenced by Hellenistic culture. What is Hellenic, Hellenistic culture? Well, it's kind of the culture of the Greeks, which also is kind of intertwined in some ways with their religion, okay? Zeus, Olympus, Jupiter, all of the Greek gods, the pantheon, that Greek culture, Hellenistic culture. And Koine Greek, as it was called, Koine Greek, Koine simply means common. It was the common Greek. It wasn't some upper echelon level of communication. It wasn't the uh, fancy form, the, the formal form of the language. It was the everyday common form, the Koine Greek was used not only for international communication, but also as the first language of many Jews. It became the first language of many Jewish people in Israel because that land was conquered by Alexander the Great and subsequently others who were Hellenistic in their culture. This development was furthered by the fact that the largest Jewish community of the world lived in Ptolemaic Alexandria, Egypt. Many of these diaspora Jews, meaning the Jewish people that were outside of the land of Israel, would have Greek as their first language. And the first Torah, and first the Torah, and then other Jewish scriptures. Later, the Christian Old Testament, okay, the Tanakh, as known by many Christians today by the phrase Old Testament, were therefore translated into standard Koine Greek. Yes, what we refer to as the Old Testament was translated into Greek. That's the version known as the Septuagint. This was before the New Testament was penned. And so Greek became the main spoken language, not only of commerce, not only of everyday conversation, but even the language in which the scriptures was understood. And by scriptures here, I mean the Hebrew Bible the Hebrew scriptures, were also translated into Greek because it, was, it became the predominant language of the Jewish people by the first century. Currently, 1,600 Jewish epitaphs, funeral inscriptions, okay, when somebody has something on their gravestone, are extant from ancient Palestine, okay, Israel. I don't like the term Palestine. Wikipedia here in this article uses it dating from 300 BC, 300 years before Christ, to 500 AD. And of those, those epitaphs in Jewish cemeteries, in Jewish burial grounds, in Jewish tombs, approximately 70% are in Greek. 70%. About 12% are in Latin, and only 18% are in Hebrew or Aramaic. In Jerusalem itself, about 40% of the Jewish inscriptions from the first century period, okay, in Jerusalem specifically, in the first century period before 70 AD, those inscriptions that have been found are in Greek during that time period. We may assume that most Jewish Jerusalemites who saw the inscriptions in situ were able to read them. And in situ simply means on site. When Jewish people in those days, in that area, the local Jews, saw those inscriptions, we can only assume that they were able to read them. Why else would they have been written in Greek? 
the New Testament Gospels and Epistles were only part of a Hellenistic Jewish culture, meaning a Greek culture, in the Roman Empire, where Alexandria had a larger Jewish population than Jerusalem, and Greek was spoken by more Jews than Hebrew. And again, there's the link, Wikipedia, language of the New Testament. How the language evolved, these people were not Gentiles, they were Jews, and they spoke in, with the Jewish context using, in fact, Jewish and Hebrew, whether they realized it or not, grammatical structures and content that we today sometimes miss in our English translations. And so I look forward to getting into some of these examples with you in the lessons to come to look and see how, even though the New Testament was written in Greek, we can still see, especially if we look for it, just the Jewish context jumping off the page the Hebraisms, the, the, the Hebrew grammatical structures and concepts, and yes, even vocabulary, that shine through the Greek of the New Testament. Look forward to joining you in the next lesson. Shalom. Shalom.